Welcome to another Tech Help Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Quick queries are all the questions that get posted, comments, all that good stuff that don't need a video on their own, but I like to put them all together into a bundle, and that's what we call quick queries, and we do it every Friday, and it's pretty cool. And let's see where we're starting first. All right, first up today, we've got an email from Brent, one of my gold members, and he's trying to do a record set loop and send emails to everybody in his database. And I've, I've got several videos on how to do this. I've Here, I'll give you some links. All right, first up here, send email with CDO. Uh, this lets you send email directly from your Access database by connecting directly to the mail server without having to use a program like Outlook. It's much, much better. Check it out. And you can use a record set to loop through records to send an email. See here, send an email, right? Using the technique that I showed you in the other video to the person, like who's ever in the query, like your customer, for example. All right, so Brent posted a whole bunch of code here, which we don't, it, this isn't really relevant. But the problem is, is he wants to send it to a second person. And that person is listed in like a secondary contact table. And of course, all the guys on the site helped him out, Kevin and Raymond and everybody, and he was able to figure it out, okay? But I wanted to just show you what the solution ended up being because this is actually pretty important. And whether you're sending email or not, this is pretty cool. So let's take a look at how this would look in the tech help template. So here's the customers, right? Every customer's got an email address and every customer has contacts. Now let's say as part of these contacts, you can tag another person. And then you want to include that person in your email. And the person is another customer associated with them, another person in your database, right? So in here, I don't know why I went to design mode here first. We have to add it to the table first. So in the contact table, we could add another person, right? Let's call it um, additional person ID. And that's uh, not an auto number, just a number of type long integer. It's your foreign key. And that is linked back to another customer. See what I'm saying? So save that. And now in our contacts in here, we can add an additional person onto here. Whoops. Mm, design view. There we go. Open that up. Let's drop a combo box in here so we can pick another person. All right, drop it right in here. We're going to do that. And then we're gonna get data from a customer. And then we're gonna bring over this and uh, I'm not gonna go through, oh, I should've used customer first last queue. Let's do that, hold on, back, back. Uh, let's see, table or query. It's gonna be queries, customer, LFQ. That's a query that joins together last and first names so you can see them both in the combo box. Okay, so we'll bring over both of those. Next, sort it, whatever, LF is fine. Next, this is what it's gonna look like. Next and next and we're going to store that in the additional person id and then finish all right we're going to delete that label so now you can tag a person with each contact another person right save that close it all right so now for me let's say i'm going through here i want to tag jane cobb i want to tag wesley crusher and this one down here, I want to tag uh, Kelly Fry. Okay, and let's say on Jim Kirk's contacts, he's going to tag Alex Lifeson and Miles O'Brien. Okay, now the key is I need a query that is going to allow me to loop and send email to all of those people, the, the main person and the other people that they're referencing. So now you can make a query, create, Query design, bring in the customer, bring in the contact table, and then bring in the customer table again. Okay, now this relationship here, we're gonna make this a left join so that you see all of the customers, whether or not they have contacts, because if, no if they don't have any contacts, they won't show up, right? That's what a left join does, right? Outer joins. And now we're gonna join this table by the additional person ID. This guy relates to another customer record. And then also do the same thing. Right, see that? Now I wanna see the customer ID, 
maybe their first name, last name, if you want to, I don't care, right? Email address. And then if you want to see who their additional people are, then you want to bring in this customer ID and that email address. And now when you run it, you'll get one record for each of the customers on the left and then one record for each of the people that they're joined to. Now you're gonna get some duplicates. So you have to filter that out in your loop. And if you don't wanna see all the ones over here that are blank, you can you know adjust the query otherwise. But now here you can see that you know there's that one, there's that one, there's that one. That's called a self-join relationship. It's basically a table relating back to itself. It's going through an intermediary table here, but it's the same thing. I show you how to deal more with self-join relationships in my genealogy video. It's basically what it is. It's, it's you know, a person to his father, to his mother, to his children. That's a self-join. It's a customer to a customer, basically. And that's also why in a lot of in databases, I tell you, you know, if you've got customers and vendors and employees and, you know, all these different things, they're all people. Just put them all in the same person table and then just denote what they are. Okay, this person's a customer and this person, because people can also be multiple things. The same person can be an employee and a customer and technically a vendor, and it's all the same person. So I would make that a many-to-many -many relationship with a junction table, and then you can pick all of the different things, all the different categories that person falls into. Or right? if you run a company, one of your employees could be a vendor. Maybe you sell his biscuits on the weekends. I don't know, right? But he, and, he, and he comes in and buys your, your fruit baskets. So, right? No reason for three separate tables. Now, how you handle the loop here is up to you. Uh, and, and that's more of a matter of, um, of, of, how, what, of what your email is supposed to be doing. Do you wanna email each of these people? And then if they have this, send the same email to this guy related to the, you know, some with some information about the primary customer, or do you just want a unique list of, of people? Because if you just want a, a unique list, there's no reason to do this join. You could just do that and then union that list in too. That's another option something called a union query we could say okay just give me all the primary email address people and then give me all the secondary email addresses put them all in one big query you know aggregate it so you don't get any duplicates and then send to that list that's another option too but if you want to send an email where there's information that's going to this guy that's related to this guy like maybe he's part of the family and you got to say that oh you and jim kirk are blah 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 so i would just then run my record set down this ignore duplicates so like literally right in your loop you ignore different duplicates and then if there's a you know if this field shows up then also send to that one there's so many ways you could do this <laughs> there's like 15 ways you could do this but you've already figured it out i just wanted to share this with other people so there we go let's head over to the youtubes and edwin's got a question about fitness 25 now now as of today only fitness 21 has gone public so edwin's a member he's a little ahead I just want to say that, uh, and this is going out to everybody, um, wait until I'm done with uh, Fitness 28 before you ask me any questions about the filtering in that, in that log table because I've changed it a lot between the, you know, over the next couple of lessons. Okay, so all the, all the fitness people who are listening and the rest of you who are not watching the fitness database series, you're missing a really cool database series. It's got lots of cool stuff in it. So just because you don't care about fitness, if you care about databases, watch this because it's, it's really good. It's one of the best series I've done. Lots of cool stuff in it. I'm already up to level 28 and there's probably going to be like 40 or 50 of them at least. And uh, just cool stuff. So check it out. But yeah, don't worry too much if you got problems with the filtering at this point. It gets better. So wait, wait till you finish 28. <laughs> Speaking of Fitness 20, uh, Giorgio says at uh, Time Index 801, you said uh, you could speak it if you want to, if you remember. What do you mean? Well, in one of the members extended cuts, I showed you how to make the database speak. And you can add that too if you want to. Just go watch this video. That's what I said. You can speak it if you want to. You can make the database speak the error message or whatever that was at that, at that moment. Okay? Okay. Yes, um, Dingus Baddus caught one of my, uh, my Back to the Future references uh, where he walks into the, the Cafe 80s where it's always morning in America, even in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, easy speak 101 thanks for a solution when referen referential integrity fails sometimes without error message um, yeah I don't rely on referential integrity ever ever since I started working with um, with split databases and the fact that I've got databases that have got you know multiple split tables you lose the ability to do referential integrity if the tables are in different database files uh, 
not to mention if you've got some data in SQL Server and some is still local. So I just, I always work on a coding solution for that. If, if I wanna, you know, have a user delete something, which I try not to let them delete stuff, but uh, if they do, then I make sure I delete all of the child records manually myself and don't give them any, op any opportunity to delete stuff any other way but using my button. So that's why I say you never let your users into your tables because then they can make a mess of things. Next up, Christoph says he wanted to know, I mentioned the video on transactions and he wanted to check and make sure it's available somewhere. Uh, now, I'm not sure what type of transactions you're talking about, but yes, I've got videos on it. Now, if you're talking about tracking bank transactions, watch this video. But I think you're talking about SQL transactions since you were asking about uh, my run SQL versus execute database uh, a video. So yes, uh, Microsoft Access Developer 49 covers transactions. It's a little bit more in depth than I usually go into for a tech help video. But uh, yep, yep, we cover it in here and um, show you everything you need to know. A transaction for everybody else who's wondering is, um, it's when you've got a series of SQL statements and all of them have to succeed or else none of them will succeed. For example, let's say you're doing a bank transfer, right? Um, that involves two transactions, two, two SQL statements, right? You're taking money out of one account and you're adding money to another account. That's two different SQL, right? So a transaction, you can wrap those inside of a transaction. So if either one of those fails, then they both fail. The whole transaction fails. Right. If you can't, let's say you can't pull money out of one of them, then, you know, the other one, you don't want to deposit it. <laughs> or if there's a problem depositing it, maybe the account's closed, then the first one gets rolled back. So that's what transactions are. OK, so if you're curious, check it out. Access Developer 49. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below. Nigel One Writer says, finally catching up with the series and I'm seeing lots of things I can transfer to other databases. Yeah, that's exactly the point. Thank you very much for posting that. That's what I'm trying to tell everybody else. If you're not watching my fitness database series, you're missing out. There's lots of cool database stuff in there. You don't have to be building a fitness database to benefit from it. So check it out. Thanks, Nigel. Uh, Camarique TV says, is Access Database Cloud browser-based and compatible with Macs? If not, what database solution is available to Mac users? Well, first of all, I strongly, I highly recommend, not strongly, I highly recommend uh, Access Database Cloud. If you want to share your database with other people around the world and you don't want to bother with setup, if you don't want to have to deal with, you know, setting up SQL Server and migrating all your tables, uh, with Access Database Cloud, you're basically setting up an instance of a computer in the cloud that you can log in through your browser. Yes, through any browser, PC, Android. I use it on my Android phone all the time. Your Mac should access it just fine, right? It's basically a screen share and you can set up multiple instances. So you've got multiple people that all have their own instances and it's really cool. Check this video out for more information. I'll put a link down below, but yes, it will run on your Mac. As far as will access itself run on a Mac, it only will if you're running an emulator, like a Windows emulator. In fact, Alex, has a couple different things in here that you can use like VirtualBox. I think there's something called Parallels. I am not a Mac user. This is a long, big, real big long thread on my website. I'll put a link to this down below. Uh, I'm not a Mac user. I haven't used a Mac since high school. Uh, I think I used like an Apple II or something even then. But uh, no, I, I don't use Mac pro or Apple products mostly. So uh, that's, you have to ask Alex that one. Next up, Creenich says I have two MDB databases created before 2000. I use them day in, day out and have extended, amended and added code over the years. I've never had any bother opening, but should I change them to ACCDB? Yeah, I would uh, take a day, back everything up first, of course. But I would upgrade them to the uh, the newer format. There's just, there's some benefits and I'm not gonna go into all of them, but I definitely would. Um, uh, ACCDB is a lot less likely to get corrupted, for example. Um, but yeah, it's not hard. Just create a blank new ACCDB file and import all the objects. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, out by 50, saying that he's got some qualms with calling temp bars variables. Uh, yeah, I just, sometimes when I'm in the middle of, of making a video, I, I, you know, I might refer to it as a variable. It's, it's, it's not technically, you're right. But uh, you can think of it like a variable. Um, there's a lot of pros, a lot of cons, as you know. Um, my big thing is they survive um, access throwing up an error and crashing, whereas like a, a public variable will not. And uh, yes, it being visible from SQL is a big, uh, a big plus too. So yeah, I just, yeah, I, I might've called it a variable, but okay, sorry, my bad, you got me. <laughs>
And with that, we're going to end another Quick Queries Friday. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.